Wow, that last video on 3D printer dimension tuning generated a lot of comments. Let me see if I can address some of those today. Welcome back to Cloud42, I'm James. In my last video, I showed how to adjust 3D printed parts to compensate for filament shrinkage, and quite a few of you had quite a lot to say about that. I've picked out a few of the comments, and I'll try to respond to some of those today. I think the uh, first comment that I saw quite a lot of was people that just didn't seem to believe that the filament actually shrinks. And several people said that if the part was actually shrinking when it cooled, it would pop off of the bed. And that's exactly right. It does pop off of the bed. If I print a part that's any bigger than about 25 millimeters on the largest dimension, then as it cools, you hear a cracking sound if you're in the room, and then the part pops completely free of the bed, and I can just walk over and pick it up. Several people suggested that the parts aren't really shrinking, and that the real problem is just that my printer is old and isn't adjusted properly. That's a possibility, so it's worth a check. So I took a caliper and measured the movement of the axes. Now, I measured both X and Y, but here I'm showing the measurements on the Y axis just because they're easier to see on camera. So the first thing I'll do is take a measurement for a baseline and set the caliper to zero. And then I'll move the print bed back 170 millimeters and take another measurement. I just chose 170 millimeters because I have an eight inch caliper and that was the largest size that I could really measure conveniently with this setup. And as you can see, when I told it to move 170 millimeters, it actually moved 169.83. Doing the math on that means there's an error of about 0.1%. Now that's not nothing, but it's also not the 0.5% that we saw on the actual printed parts. So I think it's safe to say that a very small amount of the error, about one-fifth, is coming from the calibration of the printer axes, but the rest, the other 0.4%, is coming from shrinkage on the filament. Now the good news is that if I set my adjustment to 0.5%, then I'm compensating for both of those at the same time. In that last video, I showed how to use the scaling factor in Simplify 3D to compensate for the filament shrinkage, and pointed out that what I really wanted was a setting in the filament profile so that we could have a different value for each kind of filament, but I didn't see anything, and I asked people to put things down in the comments if they knew of a better way to do it. And several of you responded to that, pointing out that Simplify 3D does indeed have something called horizontal size compensation in the filament profile. But I don't think that setting does what you think it does. Uh, let's go into the computer and let me show you what I mean. Okay, here we are in Simplify 3D, and I have taken out the scaling factor, so we're down to just 100%, and this is a 100 millimeter circular part. Now, if I wanna scale this up, we know if I wanna scale this up, let's pick a bigger number than we did last time. Last time was 0.5%, but I'm gonna pick something bigger. I'm gonna pick 5%, just to make the examples easier to see. So this is 100 millimeters. If I want it to be 105 millimeters, then we need to scale it up 5%. So these major lines here are 25 millimeters. So there's 25, 50, 75, 100. You can see on the grid, it's 100 millimeters wide. If I come in here and scale this to 105%, you can see that it grows. It's grown two and a half millimeters in this direction, two and a half millimeters in this direction. And so the whole part is now five millimeters larger. But instead of using scaling, which we have to set on every part as it comes in, let's instead look at the horizontal size compensation, which is a part of the profile. So if I click on Edit Process Settings and go over here to the other tab, here's the setting, Horizontal Size Compensation. Now this is 100 millimeters, and if I think it needs to be 105 millimeters, then I should be able to just add five millimeters to this. Five millimeters, click OK. Now you don't see any change here because it's applied as a part of the slicing. So I'll click prepare to print 
and you can see that this has gotten bigger. These are the same 25 millimeters. So from here to here is 100 millimeters, and you can see that it's extended another five millimeters over that side and another five millimeters over this side. So actually that's not what we wanted. That added five millimeters to each side. It didn't size the whole thing up by five millimeters. So let me exit this and change the settings. We only need two and a half millimeters on each side. So I'll change that here, 2.5. Okay, slice it again, and that gives us exactly what we wanted. It's grown two and a half millimeters on this side, you can see, and it's two and a half millimeters on this side, so the total width of this is now 105, which is what we wanted, kind of. Now the way the horizontal size compensation works is it just adds material to all of the sides of the part. That does make the part bigger if it's you know like a round or a square part like this, or if it's rectangular, it'll add the same amount in each direction, but it's not really scaling it. It's not really scaling up the entire part. So let's consider a part that has holes in it, like this one. So this is a bar with two holes in it, and this is similar to the part that I was using last week, and you can see that these holes are 100 millimeters apart. This is the same 25, 50, 75, 100 millimeters. Now let's say we know that this part needs to be 105 millimeters, so we want to scale it up by 5%. We can do the same scaling here, 105%, and you can see it's scaled up. The center has moved out 2.5 millimeters in each direction. This is now 5 millimeters longer. Let me just go ahead and set that back. And let's see what happens if instead we try to use the horizontal size compensation. So I'll come in here, go to the other tab, hit set to zero, I'll set it to I know we don't want to add five here, we want to add 2.5, so it'll add two and a half millimeters in each direction, and then we'll slice it. You note that this has got 10 millimeter holes and it's on 100 millimeter centers. So what happens when we slice it with two and a half millimeters of horizontal size compensation? Probably not what we expected. What it did is it added two and a half millimeters all the way around the outside, and it added two and a half millimeters to the inside walls of the hole. So now that hole that was 10 millimeters has now shrunk to five, but more importantly, you see they're still 100 millimeters apart because it didn't scale up the overall part. So if I had a situation where there was something going on on the perimeter walls where I was either over or under extruding and I needed to adjust the walls in or out a little bit, the horizontal size compensation would be appropriate for that. But if I'm trying to compensate for shrinkage, like my part is the wrong length overall and has complex features, then the horizontal size compensation is not what I'm looking for. And in this case, it's exactly wrong because I was trying to get a little more distance between the holes to properly fit the holes in a PC board. And you can see the horizontal size compensation does not do what we want. We instead need to scale the whole part up so that not only does the perimeter get larger, but the placement of the holes spreads out as well. And finally, several people pointed out that I don't actually need a rule in Simplify 3D to rotate the parts to put Z up when I bring them in because there's actually a setting in Fusion 360 to set Z up as the default axis orientation for modeling. And sure enough, it's there. If you go into Fusion 360 and click on the account name in the upper right corner, select Preferences, there is a setting to change which axis is up for modeling. And we can just change that and select Z up, and that solves the problem. So thank you very much, that's very helpful. I'd like to just take a moment and thank everybody for their comments on the videos. You know, some of them were right on point, some of them came out of misunderstandings, but it's all good, that's how we all learn. And I appreciate the comments, keep them coming. That's all I have for today. If you are enjoying these videos, please give me a thumbs up. Feel free to subscribe to the channel, and if you think I missed anything still, go ahead and leave a comment, and maybe we'll talk about it in a future video. Thank you for watching.